Ladies and gentlemen, from Redding, California, this is your friend, the chemistry class. Yo, 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 yo. Thank you. It's good to see you. I miss you. So I want to give you another example, which I said I will explain to you a case where you have more than one single atom. So I have two single atoms, which is going to go in center. Yes? Well, let's try to do both and see which is more reasonable. One option is to place both of them in center. And we have two hydrogens. Hydrogen can make one bond. So I put one hydrogen on the oxygen side, one hydrogen on the carbon side. That's one option. The other option is place carbon in center. Oxygen and hydrogen atom on the sides. So let's see which one of these are more reasonable, which one molecules are going to decide. So I'm going to define a new concept. It's called formal charge, which is calculated by this formula. If you want to calculate formal charge on, on any atom, all you have to do is take total number of balance electrons in one atom at a time minus total number of non-bonding electrons, and minus half of the number of bonding electrons. Then you can calculate for more charge. I'm going to do this on the board. Simple formula. Just have to plug in in the formula to calculate for more charge. Guys, if you want to buy a Christmas present for somebody, you go to Macy's, you find a, a watch, you have $20 budget, and the watch is $40, you have to pay $20 on your credit card. You have to charge it to credit card. And then you go to Walmart, you see the same watch for $20. So you can buy the same item for less money, less charge. Which one do you choose? Less charge. Atoms do the same thing. They say, I have two ways, left or right, whichever has less charge, less formal charge. Ladies and that gentlemen, is a better thing for me. From Redding, California, this less is your friend, the chemistry class. Less charge means less energy. Yo, less charge yo, means yo, yo. stability. Thank you. So Adams, it's decide. good to see you. Which I miss you. To go. This example, are you with me? Which has less charge, Okay. easier to go. OK. So I'm going to complete these two and show you that one of them is rejected by this formula. One of them has too much charge. Let's do that. <coughs> by the way, <coughs> if you add charges, if you have charges, four more charges in atoms, you add them together, it must be equal to the charge of the polyatomic ion. That's the rule which I'm going to apply and show it to you. OK, so if I am using the option where carbon and oxygen, they are both in center, I can complete the octet. This oxygen has double bond, single bond, two, four, six, eight complete octet. Two, four, six, eight complete octet. So I have completed octet by showing this structure. And the way I do that, I look at total number of valence electrons. Carbon is bringing four. Oxygen is bringing six. Hydrogen is in group one. It has one valence electron. Two times one is to add them together. You have 12 electrons. So, and I have used 12 electrons here, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So you say this is a good option. You may look at it and say that's a good option. 12 electrons brought in, 12 electrons used to give a complete octet. I'm going to calculate the formal charge on every atom on this molecule and decide is there a charge or not. If there is a charge, it's rejected. Only if the other option doesn't have a charge. So let's calculate formal charge on carbon. Let's do it together. Are you tired? Is Ali tired? I can see Ali is tired. 
I, I can give away a few chocolates to a few people who are tired because I want you to be present and understand this one is really hard too. I am not using used chocolate. <laughs> Although I'm taking them out of the sink. <laughs> the reason is, say, my chocolate basket went down the sink, but it's okay. They are still alive. They are alive, I'm kidding. No, are you sure? Yes. Uh, Joe, are you sure you need chocolate or not? You are tired, I can tell. This is recent. Recent gives you a lot of energy. I hope you are not allergic to not. Anybody else who is really tired? I want to make sure. Yes. That Marina, you are too tired. I'm sorry. Yes. That Aster, yes. I'm sorry, Jason. She's not, she's not tired. Thank you, man. Anybody else who is tired? I want to make sure. This is the important part. You can't afford to be tired. How many days? Yes. Yes. Liz. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. Right here. That's Jerry. Anybody else? Are you sure, Zendi? Zendi, are you sure? Yeah? Oh, yeah. See, I have to put it on. JJ, AJ. JJ, you missed it. You missed it twice today. How would you do that? Are you ready now? So ready. So, thank you so much. I love your enthusiasm and energy. Guys, guys. Let's. Calculate four bar charge on carbon. Total number of valence electrons on carbon. How many valence electrons on carbon? Four. Minus total number of non-bonding electrons. How many non-bonding electrons do you have on this carbon? Two. Two. Thank you. Minus half of the total number of bonding electrons. How many bonding electrons? Is this two electrons in bond bond? Four electrons in these two. <laughs> So four plus two, six, yes? Half of six is three, I get negative one charge. So carbon is not neutral. It has negative one charge, right? How about oxygen? Oxygen, help me. Total number of valence electrons. What group number oxygen belongs to? Six. So can I say valence electron are six? Yeah. Minus total number of non-bonding electron. How many non-bonding electron in this? Two. Yes, two, thank you. Minus half of total number of bonding electrons. Is this bonding electron? Two, two. four, six. six. So half of six is three. So you get plus one charge, right? So with this formula, we have charge, just like going to Macy's. Right? Molecule is going to sit down and calculate. Let me see other options. Am I have, going to have charge in the other options? Or I can get out without the charge, without using my credit card. OK, I want to answer some questions. Then continue. Santana, you have a question? Go. Oh, no, I'm just doing the math. OK, anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, Austin. What are we doing? <laughs> Can we go back like 10 minutes and start over? Yes. I'm going back. 10 minutes, did you say? No. What are we doing? What does this tell us? What I'll tell you right here. I, yeah, I don't even know what they are. Are you kidding? No, This is what I'm doing. The formula is H2, CH2O. We are deciding whether the formula is going to be this This is one option. And, or is it going to be carbon in center, hydrogen here, oxygen here, and hydrogen here? Is it carbon in center, or is it both oxygen and carbon in center? Because both oxygen and carbon in this formula are unique atom. You know how we said unique atom goes in center? We're trying to see which one is going to happen, which is correct formula. 
So what we have just proven is this, that in this formula, you have negative charge on carbon and positive charge on oxygen. So if this structure is formed, this has four more charge. Having a charge means an instability. Hard to happen. You need energy, extra expense. Yes, dear? How do you know if an atom is unique? Unique means one. Okay. If you have one oxygen, and one carbon, these are unique atoms. Unit by, by unit, I, by unit, I mean one. Thank you for asking. That was very important in many students' mind, I think. When you ask, you help them. Okay. Now the question is, is this having equal charge or not? If this doesn't have a charge, it's a better option, right? Are you with me so far? Austin, go. Neutral? I'm sorry? Isn't that neutral? Which one? The first one. Yes. Yes, one positive and one negative added together, they become zero. Over our charge is zero. So why wouldn't they just use that? Use what? I need bonding. I need bonding. That's a molecular formula. That doesn't tell you anything. We need bonding. We need geometry. Geometry determines property. So I need to know, is this correct or that one? That is molecular formula. It doesn't give you enough information. It's like telling you there is a person with two eyes and one nose and two ears and uh, two legs and two hands sitting inside the room. You won't know it is Austin or not. You need more information. Yes. Anybody else? Okay, guys, let's go. Go ahead, Ethan. Um, so we were just clarifying that the reason that carbon is negative and oxygen is positive is where does material occur? No, we use this formal charge formula. Yes, we use this calculation. So this is one option. Let me look at the other option. This is the other option, yes or no? Yes. Is this a better option or not? Molecule is doing this without? This, yes. is, this is the better option. Let's check. Do we have a still 12 electrons, four from carbon, six from oxygen, that's 10, two from hydrogen, yes? yes. 12 electrons. How, how many do I have complete octet? Now, hydrogen would never have complete octet, but it has two. It looks like helium. It's happy. Carbon, does it have eight electrons? Yes or no? Four bonds on carbon, eight electrons. Yes, yes. Carbon has four electrons bonding, two electrons, non-bonding, eight electrons. Yes or no? So that's a plausible structure. Yes? And then I'm going to calculate four more charge to see if this structure has four more charge or not, if it has less formal charge or no formal charge is more acceptable. Lisa, I need your attention here. Okay. Oh, Liz, I meant. Guys, formal charge on carbon. Total number of valence electrons on carbon is four. Yes or no? Yes. Total number of non-bonding electrons on carbon. How many? Zero. How many on carbon? Zero. Zero. There is no lone pair. Zero. Minus half of total bonding of electrons. How many total bonding electrons do you see on carbon? Oh. Eight? Yes, who said eight? Good job, thank you, Paul. So half of eight, right? Do I get zero? So there is no charge on carbon. In this case, there was charge carbon. No, I will answer a question. Now we know this might be a better option. Let's check the oxygen, guys. We are looking at one atom at a time. What is number of valence electron on oxygen? Belongs to group 6A, yes? What did you say? Six. Six. Minus total number of non-bonding electrons. How many non-bonding electrons do you see? Four. Four. Minus half of the total number of bonding electrons on oxygen. How many bonding electrons on oxygen? Four. Four. So do I get zero charge? So what is this telling you? This option doesn't have formal charge. The other option has formal charge. It takes energy to separate positive and negative. This is unstable. This is going to basis. You have to charge part of the money for the present to your credit card. And this option is like going to Walmart. You buy the same gift with the money in your pocket. You don't have to charge anything to your 
credit card. So molecules do calculation and decide, just like you do. Isn't it amazing? There is logic in this universe. Everything has its own logic. That's why we are studying science. We are trying to understand secrets of nature. Nature doesn't reveal its secret easily. We have to find it out gradually. That's how you have this amazing world today. Digital world. Yes, somebody had a question. Go. That's uh, Holly, yes? Go. How come there's no dots around H's? Well, H's, we said hydrogen. There is one electron in hydrogen. What is the noble gas that hydrogen is looking up to? Helium. Helium has two electrons. So having two electrons for hydrogen is ultimate happiness. Hydrogen would never have complete octet. Every other atom would, hydrogen exception. Hydrogen always make one, one bond, two electrons, that's ultimate happiness, just like helium. Anybody else? Anybody else? Rob, why? Are you doing OK? OK. Yes, uh, let me try to remember your name. God, I forgot. Go, Haiti, go. Louder. Correct. Correct. If I do the charge on the H, what do I get? Number of valence electron on hydrogen is one. Minus total number of non-bonding electron is zero. So one minus zero is zero. Half of the bonding electron, which is two. Half of two is one. So one minus one is zero. Hydrogen doesn't have a charge. Any other questions? Guys? Guys, Muraya, are you doing OK? Are you tired? Gabby, are you tired? Chocolate? OK. OK. You are going to get this important concept. Kayla, are you tired? I'm all right after energy drink. OK. Guys, so rules for formal charges, neutral molecules in which there is no formal charge are preferable to one in which formal charge are present. Same thing that I said. If you don't have to charge anything to your credit card, you would rather to get that item. Molecules do the same. Number two, Lewis structures with larger formal charges are less plausible. Guys, what if you go to Walmart, you have to pay, buy the gift, pay $20 in your pocket, you have $10 on your credit card, in Macy, you have to put $20 on credit card. Of course you go to Volvo. Here, if there are two options, one has negative one plus one, the other one has negative two and plus two, it's harder to separate those charges. So the less charge, the better. What if we have two options which have, they both have four more charge, and they have equal amount of formal charge. Which is better? It says the option which has negative charge, negative formal charge, on more electron negative atom is more acceptable. So you look where negative charge is sitting. If negative charge in one atom, in one structure, is sitting on electron negative atom, that's a better option when you have equal charges. So go, guys. Cat got it already? Yes, Rob identified that we just did. The answer is on the board, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> yes, the second one with no charge, yes? Thank you. You have a question? Go. You got it, thank you. Yes? Does this make sense? So between these two, which is better, left or right? That's all we're asking. Less charge, more stable. Jessica, I know you for a change. Haley, I know you.
All you need to be doing yesterday, Tyler. Anybody show that? Yeah, Guys, I love the fact that you are going to SRI sections. College is investing to make you happier, more successful, better life. Why don't you take advantage of this? So again, Tyler has another SRI tomorrow. Uh, one today. One today, what time? Two to 250, go to supplemental instruct, instructions, sit together, help each other, and Tyler is amazing. He will help you. Don't forget, use all these facilities that college is giving you. Guys!
Okay, now Rob asks, what is the geometry of this molecule? Guys, I'm going to show you. It's easy to predict the geometry of molecules. It's very simple. The simple, the simple concept is that like charges repel each other. Is it fair to say that like charges repel each other? You don't believe me? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Guys, what is the angle between these two? What is the angle between these two rods? Zero, right? Because there is no charge. Anybody has, anybody has a balloon in their pocket for $5? I give $5 for a balloon. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to produce a static electricity by rubbing this plastic against this wall. Uh, see what happens when I charge these two rods. The charge on plastic rod is going to be negative static charge. See what happens. You see they're repelling each other? Yes? Do you see that? So if this center point is an atom, there are got it has got electron pair o over it. Is it fair to say electron pair with negative charge repel each other? They try to away, to stay away at maximum angle. Yes? I didn't have, I don't have enough hair, otherwise I could have charged it better. But I am losing hairs every time I do this experiment. Ah, <laughs> uh, kind of better, but I bet any of you can do better than me. How about if we have a contest, anybody who can, who could do this for a 90 degree angle right in here, will get a chocolate, a chocolate which has never been used before. You wanna do that? Just kidding. Just kidding, do it at home. Guys, <coughs> this simple demonstration, let me see, no. I don't have a charge, see? I'm totally neutral. Guys! Guys, this simple concept is called valence shell electron pair repulsion. It means electron pair, which are on valence shell, these electron pair repel each other. They try to stay at maximum angle. That's what Rob asks. What is the geometry of this molecule? I'll say, I'll show it to you. You can predict it. So, guys. In this structure, I have got blerium in center, two chlorine on the two sides. Can I say this is the best geometry? Blerium, chlorine, and chlorine. Is this the best way these two electron pair can stay away from each other? Yes or no? No. no. Why not? They repel each other. Negative and negative. Sorry. Negative and negative repel each other, yes or no? Yes. And this is going to be, oh, this ball. It's the ball, it's not my pen. Well, how about using black? Back to black. Can I say these to repel each other? If they repel each other, do they get further, 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 further? No. no. So where do they stop? Yes. At 90 angle, that's the maximum. They can't get 80, 70, 60, right? So can I say, if I have two electron pair or a central atom, or I have two groups of electrons with negative charge, the geometry is going to be linear. Can I say that? Linear, the structure is linear. 
because of repulsion between electron clouds. What is the angle? Help me. What is the angle? 90. Angle. Did I make a mistake? I said 90. I was wrong. I meant 180. I know why you say 90. It's coming from me, not you. Does it make sense? Yes? So guys, what if I say CO2? If I have carbon and two bonds with oxygen, and these are electron groups which are repelling each other, yes or no? What would be the best angle for these two electron groups? And excellent. So carbon dioxide is linear as well. The angle is 180. Yes? What if I have a structure like BF3? B F3. B connected to three <coughs> fluorine. Uh, is this the structure stable or is there going to be repulsion of electron clouds? Repulsion. So what is the best situation for three out of, yes. Excellent. See what Wade is saying that the space around central atom is 360, right? You're going to divide them equally between them. So B is going to be sitting in center and then it's going to be 120 here, yes? So here, this is called trigonal planar. Does it make sense? Yeah. Now, how about this structure, SO2? What is your prediction about SO2, which has got one double bond, one single bond, and these double bond and single bond are predicted by Lewis structure. You will do it in the lab. Is this, a, this geometry good? Is this geometry OK? What? Some of you say, why? The reason is lone pair. Lone pair have negative charge too. So there are three groups of electron on this. If there are three groups of electron, what is the best, the most stable minimum repulsion? Yes, good job. So this is going to have a structure, well, right, oxygen, oxygen, and this, and the angle is supposed to be 120. Long pair. Does it make sense? I'm not going to call this trigonal planar. And here is the reason. We have two systems of naming. One is called electron geometry. The other one is called molecular geometry. Your book is showing molecular geometry. What is a molecule? Can I say molecule is made out of atoms, connect the atoms together, and name this. If you look at this connection of atoms together, would you say this is a bent molecule? So molecular geometry. Is what? Bent? Yes or no? Yes. What if I ask you, show me electronic geometry? Help 
Electronic geometry. It means do not ignore lone pair. What do you see? Do you see trigonal planar? So electronic geometry is trigonal planar. But your book is showing molecular geometry. Can you see green in the back of the class? If you can't, let me know. Raise your hand. Next time, I won't use green. You can? No. You can. Thank you. If you cannot, let me know. Please, are you OK? Thank you. Guys, I want to give you, no, four, four atoms connecting to central atom. There are two options. One of Obvious option, place them in a plane, 360 divided by two is going to be 90, yes? That's one option. But if you make a tetrahedral structure here, the angle is 109, which one electrons are going to choose? Trying to be 90 degree, which is close, smaller than 109. Do they stay furthest possible? They choose 109, the geometry is tetrahedral, it's not planar, it's not 90 degree, it's not a square planar. Do you see intelligence in atom? There is a law of universe, a stability. Losing energy, gaining a stability is law of universe. That's what deciding what happens in nature spontaneously. That's one of the two rules. What time is it now, exact time? Okay, are you sure? It's 12, 11 and a half. Okay, 12, 12, my last offer. <laughs> so guys, what if I say, what is geometry of ammonia? We have two minutes, please pay attention and you will be happy after two minutes. I promise not to talk anymore. If I say ammonia, and you wrote the structure for ammonia, if you write the structure of ammonia using Lewis structure, using Lewis dot formula, ammonia, which is NH3, you have nitrogen with one electron pair, three bonds to hydrogen. How many electron pairs do you have? How many electron pairs do you have on central atom? How many electron pairs on the central atom? Three. How many? Four. Four. Lone pair on an electron pair as well. They have negative charge, right? And if you have four electron pairs, what is the desired geometry? One nine. Yes, one or nine. Tetrahedral. <laughs> so I'm going to get a tetrahedral. Well, that's the electron geometry. This is tetrahedral, but if I say name molecular geometry, ignore the lone pair. Do you see pyramidal? Do you see pyramidal? So molecular geometry is a pyramid, pyramidal. If I say electron geometry, look at all electrons, and you are going to see tetrahedral. Does it make sense? Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Thank you.